This video is brought to you by MacBag. Today, I'm gonna to talk about my experience using the iPhone 13 as my main phone for the past year, both the good as well as the bad. With the iPhone 14 just around the corner, the iPhone 13 represents a good opportunity to save some cash and still get that great iPhone experience. As always, I will leave all the purchase links down in the description. So first, let me tell you about my spec and why I chose it. So I opted to go for the iPhone 13 with 128 gigabytes in midnight. I think 128 gigabytes will be enough storage for most uh, and is a really solid place to start. Now, in terms of the uh, model itself, I decided to go for the iPhone 13 over the 13 mini for its better value with its bigger screen and crucially much bigger battery. More on battery life in a sec. And then in terms of the color, I had to go for the midnight color. Uh, if you guys have seen my channel, you will know that I love the midnight color. I even have it on my Series 7 Apple Watch, and I think it looks absolutely stunning on the iPhone 13. But let me know in the comments, what is your all-time favorite iPhone color? For me, of course, it would have to be the midnight. If you're enjoying this video so far, a sub to the channel would be incredible. Now, let's talk about durability. So the iPhone 13 features a aluminum uh, and glass squared off design that overall has held up really well. I do use a case on most days. In fact, I have done reviews on all of Apple's cases, which I will leave linked in the description. But from time to time, I will go without a case. Looking more closely at the back of the phone, uh, from one year of use, I only see one mark, and that's right by the volume button. I have no idea how this actually happened, uh, but there are no cracks or any kind of dents or bigger impacts. Uh, and then looking at the top of the phone, I have just a tiny little mark where you do see a little bit of the, um, the paint chip off. But again, I would consider both of these things to be very minor, considering that this phone has been used every day uh, for the past year. And then on the bottom of the phone, I do see some slight marks from the lightning cable being repeatedly plugged in and out. Again, this is minor, but today we're going in depth. Over the years, the iPhone screens have become much more crack resistant, but at the same time have also become more prone to scratching. And this really is the only downside about the design of this phone. The front glass on the display does scratch very easily. So I definitely recommend using a screen protector from day one. I'll leave my recommended screen protector in the description. In terms of drops, I would say I've dropped my iPhone 13 a few times, uh, but I was lucky enough to have it in a case during those times, so I never had any cracked screens or anything like that. One year later, I would say I'm still very happy uh, with the durability and the build quality of the iPhone 13. You can see that Apple has used high quality materials, uh, and as long as you take decent care of the phone, it should easily last you for many years. But again, do get that screen protector as the screen will scratch and a screen protector is a quick and a cost effective way to uh, solve this. Secondly, I also suggest you get a case as the glass on the back, particularly on the non-pro models with that more shiny uh, texture is quite slippery in the hand. And also uh, I noticed that if the phone is vibrating on a table without a case, it will actually move a little bit uh, and can literally vibrate its way off a table. Now at first I thought maybe this is a cool new feature where the phone will kind of vibrate to you when you get a call, uh, but no, unfortunately it is not. One of the best ways to protect your iPhone 13 and also add functionality to it is with MagPack. MagPack creates elegant, minimal, and functional accessories for your iPhone. This right here is the MagPack clear case. I can tell you that not all plastics are made the same, uh, and this case right here feels reassuringly well-made and dense in the hand, with a hard, clear polycarbonate back and soft TPU borders. The coolest feature of the MagPack cases is not just that they're fully compatible with MagSafe, but also with MagSticks. And this means you can mount your phone to any surface just by adding a small MagStick, for example, your dashboard, kitchen, or wall. And if the surface is already magnetic, just place the phone case to mount. The impressive array of magnets uh, in the MagBag cases also allow you to attach other accessories, for example, the MagPack wallet. So here I have the Safiano leather version, uh, which feels great. I like that leather texture and grain. And as you can see, it will seamlessly attach to the back of the case. Now, because MacBack uses more magnets than traditional MagSafe, the magnetic strength is actually up to twice as strong. And this is especially important for a wallet housing your most essential cards. 
And then Magback went even further by adding additional functionality. You can also use the wallet as a stand and have integrated a handy loop for that extra secure grip. The wallet can hold up to six cards or cards and cash thanks to having dual pockets. And then lastly is Magback's multi-charger. So this lets you charge not only your iPhone, but also your AirPods, as well as a slot for your uh, Apple Watch on the back. I love the minimalistic design. I think this is the best implementation of an all-in-one charger, and I've been using this every night. To learn more about MacBag, be sure to click the links in the description and use code Dion Schuddeboom 15 off for 15% off your order. A big thank you to MacBag for supporting the channel. Now back to the iPhone. So the iPhone 13 didn't launch with any new revolutionary features. Instead, it made improvements on some crucial and key areas, uh, ranging from the display to performance, uh, battery, as well as the camera. Let's take a look at each of these and see how they've held up over the past year. So first, let's take a closer look at the display. Now the OLED display on the iPhone 13 is stunning. Colors really pop and really brings your content to life. The display is also super sharp. Uh, I realistically can't see individual pixels and this means smaller details like finer text are still very clear and easy to read. One feature that the iPhone 13 misses compared to the 13 Pro or some Android competitors is a 120 hertz refresh rate. Now I have a 120 hertz refresh rate on my M1 MacBook Pro and this basically makes any movement on screen or animations appear extra smooth. Now this is nice to have, but I would say as long as you're not used to having 120 hertz on your previous phone or your current phone, going back to 60 hertz will not be a problem at all. And then I wanna to touch on burn-in. Now, if you don't already know, burn-in uh, can occur on any OLED displays in which a static or high brightness image can leave permanent marks on your screen that are not removable. Now, this can occur on any OLED display and this includes the iPhone 13. But thankfully, after one year of use, I can say that I see no signs of burn-in whatsoever on this display. Uh, in fact, even on my older iPhone 10, which I've used for almost three years, I had almost no signs of burn-in, just a little bit by the battery icon, uh, but this is minimal and much less when compared to competitors like, for example, uh, Samsung, which will typically start to show burn-in much earlier on. Now, to prevent burn-in from happening, I do suggest you use two features. And the first is auto brightness, as well as an auto lock timer that is set to less than around three minutes. This ensures that your display is not on unnecessarily long and will also save you battery. Speaking of battery, one of the first things that will typically start to wear on a phone after prolonged use is, well, the battery performance. So how has the battery life been like on the iPhone 13? Well, after one year, my battery health is set to 95%. And I would say this is quite good for after a year of use, especially considering that only at 80% or below will you start to see a drop in performance. Today, the iPhone 13 still gets me the same seven to eight hours of screen on time that it did on day one. And this is really impressive, far above average, uh, and compared to other competitors, like for example, the S22, which will only give around five to six hours of screen on time. During a normal day of use, I get through a full day and evening with just about 20% remaining. Rest assured, the battery performance on the iPhone 13 is really good. And importantly, it has remained just as good after a year compared to day one. Let's talk about the cameras. Now, the camera system on the iPhone 13 is truly impressive. I would say I use it every day, uh, especially the wide lens, but use the ultra wide lens from time to time too. Creating true to life photos that are sharp with high dynamic range, retaining detail in the lighter as well as the darker parts of an image, making it great for all environments, especially at night with the excellent night mode iPhones are known for their video quality, and the iPhone 13 is no exception. The way it smoothly adjusts exposure, uh, white balance, as well as focus is just unmatched. Also, sensor shift technology on the main wide lens provides almost gimbal level of stability. All of this is to say that the camera performance on the iPhone 13 places it firmly amongst the best, even today, one year later. So at the end of the day, or should I say end of the year, is the iPhone 13 still worth buying? Well, when it comes to all key parts of a smartphone from design, display, camera, performance, and battery, the iPhone 13 delivers. And this was true when the iPhone 13 was originally released, 
and is just as true today, one year on. Now, it is true that the iPhone 14 is just around the corner, but that doesn't change what a great phone the iPhone 13 is and what it offers today. Not to mention, with the iPhone 14 coming on, uh, Apple will likely sell the iPhone 13 at a lower price, meaning you get this fantastic phone for an even better value. And knowing that Apple supports their phones for a good six to even seven years, buying a one or two year old iPhone is not a bad idea and a great way to save some cash. Let me know if you have any questions. Thank you so much for watching. If you're interested, I will leave all the purchase links down in the description, as well as my discount code for MagSafe's incredible range of iPhone accessories. I have lots of iPhone content coming very soon that I can't wait to share with you all. Thanks for watching and take care.